Good evening, councillors. Good evening, councillors. It's 6.05, so we'll begin. Um, before we begin with the agenda, can I advise of a few housekeeping issues? Just to remind all present that under the council's remote meeting procedures, this meeting is being live streamed and recorded for archive purposes on the council's website. Can I ask uh, members apart from cabinet members and group leaders to ensure your mics and cameras are switched off until you're invited by myself to speak, please? And for the benefit of, the benefit of those joining online, could we please limit the use of the chat facility to ensure that all discussions take place in the meeting itself? Unless, of course, you have audio or camera issues, um, in which case, please bring this to the attention of the Democratic Services Officer as soon as possible, and um, they will let me know at the appropriate point. If you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand function in the Teams software and wait until invited to speak. If that function doesn't work for any reason, you can also raise your hand on camera. With regard to voting on recommendations, if there's no dissent to a recommendation, I'll accept the silence as agreement. And again, to remind uh, councillors that this meeting will be conducted in line with the standards set out in Section 19, Appendix 2 of the Council's Constitution. And I kindly ask that all speakers adhere to one speaker at a time. Thank you. So uh, agenda item one, apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies, please? Councillor Johnson. Um, oh. uh, apologies on behalf of Councillor William, please. Councillor Burnett. Um, could I give apologies for Councillor Ian Buckley, please? Thank you. Agenda item two, roll call and declarations of interest under the Council's Code of Conduct. Uh, can I invite the Chief Executive to take us through the roll call and any declarations, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Can I start with Councillor Anne Asprey, please? Yes, I know. I didn't beat with that gun. Councillor Julie Aviat. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Gareth Ball. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Rhiannon Birch. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Gillian Bruce. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Liz Burnett. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Samantha Campbell. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor George Carroll. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Christine Cave. Uh, present, nothing to declare. Councillor Charles Champion. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Janice Charles. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Millie Collins. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Marianne Couch. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Pamela Drake. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Vince Driscoll. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Anthony Ernest. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Robert Fisher. And present, nothing to declare. Councillor Chris Franks. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Wendy Gilligan. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Russell Godfrey. Councillor Godfrey with us. Okay, Councillor Emma Goodjohn. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Ewan Goodjohn. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Stephen Haynes. Present, and nothing to declare. Councillor Howard Hamilton. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Sally Hanks. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor William Hennessy. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Nick Hodges. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Mark Hooper. Prasanal Adimbi Udatgan. Councillor Catherine Iannucci. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Gwyn John. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Ian Johnson. Prasanal Adimbi Udatgan. Councillor Susan Lloyd Selby. 
Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Belinda Lovelock Edwards. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Julie Lynch Wilson. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Kevin Marney. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Naomi Marshall C. And present, all I didn't be to the Afghan. Councillor Michael Morgan. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Jane Norman. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Helen Payne. Present all, present and nothing to declare. Councillor Elliot Penn. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Sandra Perks. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Ian Perry. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Joanna Prithero. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Ruba Sivanianam. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Carrie Stallard. And Brasanna Ladimbida Zatgan. Councillor Neil Thomas. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Rhys Thomas. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Margaret Wilkinson. Present and nothing to declare, except I'm dying. <laughs> Councillor Eddie Williams. Is Councillor Williams here this evening? Okay. Councillor Mark Wilson. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Nicholas Wood. Present and nothing to declare. OK, thank you. And I'll just go back to check if Councillor Russell Godfrey has joined. Or oh, Councillor Carroll, you have your hand up. Councillor Godfrey is attempting to join, but he is having signal difficulties, so he will keep trying. Thank you. Uh, and Councillor Eddie Williams, just to check that Councillor Williams hasn't joined. No? No, Chief Executive hasn't. OK, thank you. That concludes the roll call, Mayor. Thank you very much. And before we move on to item three of the agenda, a short statement, if I may, um, members will be aware of the sad news of the sudden death of Claire Drakeford. So on behalf of the Vale Council and its residents, I'd like to offer my sincere condolences to the First Minister. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you at this very difficult time. Thank you all. We move on to agenda item three, report of the section 151 officer audited statement of accounts 2021-22. Uh, this agenda item includes four recommendations. The first is for noting, uh, the second is for noting agreement and signature, and the third and fourth are for approval and signature. Um, and can I move to uh, Councillor Lisbonette, the Chief Exec, to present the report, please. Maya, before we can commence, Councillor Williams has joined. Would you like to um, ask him if he's got anything to declare? Councillor Williams, welcome to the meeting. Do you have anything to declare? Yeah, apologies, everybody. Um, I've been distracted by some domestic uh, issues, so um, I've got nothing to declare. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, and so we move back to pick up agenda item three. And if I can invite uh, the executive leader, Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you, Mayor. The report today is, is in front of us in order to approve the statement of accounts and the annual governance statement and agree the final letter of representation for the year 2021-22. This report has actually already been to the Governance and Audit Committee um, and they resolved that the report of the appointed auditor on the audit of the Council's financial statements um, of 21-22 be approved and the financial statements including the annual governance statement and final letter of representation be recommended for signature by those authorised. Um, it was a um, an interesting discussion and um, I did watch all of it. Um, so from, from, from our perspective, the audit of the 2021-22 statement of accounts is now complete. Um, and the um, latest statement of accounts incorporating all agreed amendments is now attached at Appendix 1 to this report. 
there, this report normally comes earlier in the year and the because of, of COVID, the audit deadline was changed from the 31st of July 2022, which we would normally expect such a report to come on, to uh, 30th of November 2022. And then it was further delayed um, because of the need, need to amend the code and bring in statutory regulations to allow changes to the way infrastructure assets are disclosed in the statement of accounts. So we are here today in a, in a, a, a special council meeting. Um, the updated annual governance statement is also included as part of the amended accounts and the letter of representation, which will be signed by yourself, should this be approved today, um, is attached to Appendix 2. The report of Audit Wales, um, which actually states or th the intends, if this is passed today, to um, issue an unqualified audit opinion on this year's accounts, is um, is included at Appendix 3 and the words um, of the auditor at the Governance and Audit Committee were very encouraging. It's proposed that the Auditor's Statement of Accounts are signed by the Auditor General, sorry, a Statement of Accounts are signed and forwarded to the Auditor General following approval um, a, 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 of the Council. Um, as you mentioned, I won't go into huge detail because, as I said, it, it was very um, sort of comprehensively discussed in governance and audit. The recommendations before us, I think what we ought to note is that there were minor changes to Appendix A um, and that we should agree those. And they were the typographical, can't even say it today, typographical error in infrastructure um, paragraph in the infrastructure paragraph, opening other reserves in earmarked reserves disclosure, um, note 30 audit costs, that's um, a prior year difference, um, and updates to the note references. In addition, there's also um, one paragraph duplicated, and it's on page eight of the accounts, um, which has been corrected for the final version, which is being presented um, to external audit for, for signing. So they have actually all been um, amended now, but I think it's worth noting that. So the, the four recommendations are before you um, and I would move them as a whole. They are the, the report of the Auditor General for Wales be noted, that the letter of representation to Audit Wales for 2021-22 be noted and is agreed and signed and dated by the Mayor as Chair of the Council. Three, that the annual governance statement within the statement of accounts for 2021-22 be approved and signed and dated by the leader of the council. And four, that the statement of accounts for 2021-22 be approved and signed and dated by the mayor as chair of the council. Um, and I would move. And I'll second those, Mayor. Uh, thank you, that was uh, Councillor Brooks. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ian Johnson, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, could I echo um, some of the leaders' comments and, and thank both our staff and the staff at Audit Wales for their work in auditing a, a turnover of almost £500 million in the 2021-22 year. Uh, the statement of accounts is a useful opportunity for us as a council to reflect upon financial decisions that were made by the council and whether the assumptions that were made were correct. Once again, Mayor, we're in a situation where there are two Vail councils. The one we read about in the papers, which is always looking to make cuts to services and facing huge potential deficits, and one in the auditor's books, which has increased reserves by £37 million in the two years of the pandemic and almost £24 million in the financial year under question here. This isn't just about the pandemic, though. Audit Wales also say that the Vale had the highest level of uh, usable reserves compared to spending in the three financial years before coronavirus hit us. The expenditure and funding analysis on page 20 shows that the Vale's general fund and housing revenue account rose from £91 million at the end of March 2020 to £104 million a year later and then £128 million at the end of March 22. If you include the capital receipts and grants, which includes in the movement in reserves on the following page, then the usable reserves total rises to more than £144 million. One of the reasons for the increase in those reserves, we are told, is the late addition of non-planned grants from Welsh Government at the end of the 21-22 financial year. 
I accept the slightly arbitrary nature of the financial year and that unexpected new funds may give a slightly misleading impression of the amounts of money available. So we need to see to what extent those grants are being utilised rather than simply setting a new baseline below which we never drop in our reserves. For comparison there, when we set the budget in March 2021, the anticipated level of reserves by March 2022, a year later, would be just short of £47 million, including the general fund, earmarked reserves and the housing revenue account. So that's an £80 million difference in our reserves between the assumptions made of a £47 million um, set of reserves when we set that budget and the reality at the end of the following year when we had £128 million in those reserves. I don't want to overstate this, but that is quite a difference. Fundamentally, this is a question of governance and our ability to make correct decisions for our residents. It's also a reason why some of us have a degree of scepticism about predictions of doom. The housing revenue account is amongst the reasons for the increase in reserves, almost five and a half million last year in 21-22, following four and a half million in the previous year 20 to 21, taking the total HRA to nearly 17.5 million pounds. The target for HRA reserves in March 2022, when we set that budget in March 21, was to be at around £915,000, so uh, around £17, £16.5 million difference. We simply haven't been able to spend that money so far. I'm sure in the longer term we will utilise that money to build new council houses. I don't want to retread the, uh, the debate that we had on the housing revenue account a few weeks ago, but we take around £5 million more from our council tenants than we spend them each year, and during a cost of living crisis, I think it's immoral to be doing that once people are having trouble making ends meet. Mayor, uh, it's inevitable that such a piece of work as the statement of accounts includes reviews and challenge. One area from previous years is the restatement of the value of 772 garages within the HRA accounts, increasing the overall value of council assets by £4.25 million. Uh, this year, there has been focus on the bad debt provision for social care debts, where a charge is placed on the House of Residents moving for social care housing um, and is paid for once it's sold. If I understand correctly, um, the council can anticipate receipts of 82% of the £2.8 million bad debt provision based on previous experience. Um, that will be fed through to our 22-23 accounts, fundamentally saying we have a further £2 million more than our 21-22 accounts assume. I look forward, Mayor, to using the lessons learned from our 2021-22 statement of accounts and applying them to our future decision making so that we can get better and more realistic outcomes when we start discussing these things. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Mark Cooper, please. Thank you, Mayor. As a qualified accountant and one-time auditor, I want to add my thanks to the team for the preparation of statement of accounts. The very limited audit amendments tell we have a well-managed finance function in the Vale. The proposed unqualified audit report that will be issued by Audit Wales once these accounts have been accepted tonight give us and those we represent comfort that the finances are accurate and in order. The numbers are in the right place and they add up. What an order report doesn't do is talk to the reasons behind the figures. It doesn't tell us, as Councillor Johnson said, how good the council is at forecasting its short-term income and expenditure. It also doesn't tell us whether we've got the right reserves that we should have. That's for management to do. Today, but tonight isn't the place for dissecting detail on these accounts. Our scrutiny committees, as the leader suggests, exist for that. However, I do want to understand better from the leader her thinking on reserves, specifically the rate at which they've been growing, the level at which they settled at the end of the year end discussion. And most importantly, this council's broad strategic aim for an appropriate level of future reserves into the medium term planning horizon. This was a question I asked at Governance and Order, as the leader will note. Reserves are of significant interest to our residents, especially when they hear of proposed council tax rises of 4.9% and tenants of the council seeing their rents go up in similar fashion. Local authorities work on behalf of those who live, work and get educated here. When we hold money, we don't immediately need on behalf of those people we need to do so appropriately, having considered the risks ahead of us. High reserves good is not a risk-based consideration, nor is a straw man developed around the notion of some nebulous future shock. It's the public money we're holding on their behalf. As we would expect from our... I think we have lost Councillor Hooper. Um, Councillor Hooper, can I just check whether or not you're still with us? 
Yeah, Councillor Hooper, we can lost you, you. Yes, we lost you for a moment, but we can see you and we can hear you. So um, please continue. Sorry. I think we literally only lost one or two words, so please pick up where you where you left. OK, I'm just trying to think where I left. Probably some of the right. It's the public's money we're holding on their behalf, as we would expect from anyone holding our public wealth. I'd like to know, as I'm sure our residents would too, are you getting the balance right? Dear. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor George Carroll, please. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor, and I'd like to begin by sharing my thanks with the everybody within the Council, the Regional Internal Audit Team and Audit Wales for the work that they've done preparing the accounts. It is an arduous task and one I would not like to be doing, and I'm sure that most people would agree it's probably a good thing that I'm not the person I'm preparing them as well. Um, I also share a number of the concerns that have been raised by other members in relation to the council's reserves and the budget setting process. I think that they are justified um, points. I do think that issues relating to reserves are best discussed at um, the budget meeting rather than the accounts which are to ensure that the numbers add up. While I disagree with certain aspects of um, expenditure decisions and other other political decisions that are taken by the authority, I accept that now is not the moment to um, to raise them. So I will just leave that there. I would like to draw attention to the um, misstatement highlighted in relation to residential care home charges and the £2.8 million pounds that has been written off as bad debt. I appreciate that this is going to be corrected in the 2022-23 accounts, or the authority has committed to doing so. However, I think it is important to highlight that this is a substantial sum of money and it's vital that residents do have confidence that such a substantial sum, while below the um, the threshold for being considered material by Audit Wales. I think that it's something that um, that residents do need to have confidence in this process. So I would um, would seek um, assurances on that. But other than that, I will um, end where I began by thanking everybody for their work in producing these accounts. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councillor Hooper. Um, can I assume that that's a legacy hand? In which case, can I ask you to lower it? Are you with us, Councillor Hooper? Yes, thank you very much. Councillor Mark Wilson, please. Thank you very much, um, Mayor, Mr. Mayor. I think there's a few issues there that need to be discussed here. I mean, <clears throat> during 2020 and 21 and 22, we've gone through COVID. And therefore, there's been lots of delays to spending money for various good reasons because COVID has meant a huge delays, isn't it? You know, and we can see that in the figures. We can also see that in education, we had a big increase in money because of COVID. And you've got to reflect upon that. And that's unusual. Touch Touchwood, we're now actually out of that. And I am touching wood when I'm saying this. And clearly, you know, that is a bit of a bleep. But also what we also got to realise that fortunately we are in a good position in terms of reserves. And thank goodness we are. We've got inflation of around 11 percent. Now, as you know, inflation devalues money. And that is serious because it means for every hundred pounds you have with an inflation of 11 percent, it's really worth 89 pounds in a year's time. That's the reality which some of some of you don't seem to understand. You know, 100 million, it's not 100 million, it becomes 89 million and so on and so forth. And we can apply that on the compounded interest level to get lower and lower. And that's a serious issue. And that's why we really need reserves. If we don't have reserves, we end up in deficit. Now, we know that through the actions of the UK government, we have got a, a accumulated deficit of almost two trillion pounds. That is serious stuff. That almost represents 100% of our gross national product, which is our national income of our wealth of our country. That I'm really worried about. Fortunately, we are in a good position in terms of the bell. But nevertheless, if you look at our budgetary report, which was published last week, um, 
you will see, in fact, over two weeks ago almost now, you will see that, in fact, our projection, our reserves is £50 million next year and probably stabilised the year after year after that. That only represents roughly about a quarter of our income for the year. So that's fairly minimum amount of money. And, you know, I'm more concerned about that than where we are now. You know, I'm hoping that things will be better than that, to be quite honest with you. And hopefully we will be through prudent financial management. And if it wasn't for our officers and the leadership of this administration, we will end up with a situation of low reserves. I know one party here has always argued for 0% increase in council tax. Well, if we did that year in and year out, we'd have no reserves at all. And clearly that is a, an important issue. And that's, you know, but also I also like to thank on board and I have been chair of your committee in the past, as you know, and chair of corporate resources. Can I thank the, the staff, the accounting staff, and the audit staff who have worked so hard to produce those accounts? That is no mean task. In fact, many public limited companies take some time, almost a year in publishing their accounts. And we published it in around six months. So they deserve to be congratulated. OK, and really, I think Councillor Cowley is right. This is not for debating in terms of the figures. This is for approving the accounts. And there's nothing really wrong with them. And even Councillor Hooper submitted that. That's what we should be focusing on tonight. Not anything else. Anything else should be in scrutiny committee where we can have a thorough debate and at the budgeting process, which is coming up soon. So I think, I, you know, I welcome that debate about that. But we've got to remember. The value of money over the last couple of years has decreased in value significantly, and that's why we need good, healthy reserves. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Chris Franks, please. Thank you. Um, now, to my mind, I consider that the uh, accounts indicate a major failing of the political leadership of this council. Um, to properly manage its resources. The residents are crying out for better maintained roads, for greater investment in our classrooms, and for a drive in environmental matters. Um, I've never seen an auditor criticise an authority for being overly prudent in all the years I've been uh, looking at uh, audit reports. So when I see this comment in respect of care home services reserves of £2.8 million, it simply means you have exercised very poor judgment. It prompts the question, where else are there such uh, inadequate decision uh, making uh, uh, actions uh, by councillors taking place? Last year's schools were warned that they had to uh, make plans for a potentially 10% cut in their budgets. Now, this would have been catastrophic, especially for the vulnerable and disadvantaged pupils. Yet at the same time, you're hoarding huge amounts of cash. Even now, in next year's budget, you want £2 million taken out of uh, uh, schools. You have failed to properly invest in our housing stock. And in the meantime, sheltered housing suffers from out of date entry systems and poor quality community, community communal areas. Your building program is very suspect. I note that there's redundancy packages uh, totaling over £250,000. And this includes £121,000 for an in uh, and a, a, a one single employee. And this is a significant sum that I think should be explained either tonight or by email. Uh, however, I readily understand there could be confidential issues here, uh, but we'll see what happens there. I'm pleased to see that the big fresh company is making progress uh, and would ask, though, why the company is liable for corporation tax to the tune of £137,000. Uh, is the company the best business model to avoid such uh, taxation? 
Now, you complain about late grants uh, from Welsh Government. Uh, might I suggest uh, the leadership here has a word with their colleagues in the Senate? Um, however, uh, schools ha have also experienced the same problem. But as I understand the situation, they cope a lot better than uh, this authority has coped. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Wilson for his um, lecture of, uh, on inflation. Uh, I think his message is, uh, if, uh, uh, if you keep unspent funds each year, the council loses value. Uh, well, precisely, if you don't spend the money, it, they lose value. It means you can't resurface roads. It means you can't uh, invest in schools. You can't do what we want. You, you really have proved the point of those who are critical of these excessive uh, uh, excessive balances. So thank you, Mark. I, uh, I'm very grateful for your guidance. Uh, in conclusion, I would urge that applying the resources in a far more effective manner should be the priority of the political leadership of this council. That you recognise that these monies are taken from council taxpayers for a purpose, and you must address the fact that the failure over a number of years is adversely impacting on the well-being of residents of the Vale. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I see no other councillors waiting to speak, so if we return to Councillor Burnett, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Thank you for the, the various comments. It's interesting, actually, it's, well, it's a shame that I, I read most of those comments in press releases in advance of, of today. Um, equally disappointing. I think most of it we'll replay in a couple of weeks time when we discuss the budget, um, because this is a retrospective report. And actually, the question before us is, do the accounts present fairly? And I think that that is unequivocal. So, um, you know, that's fairly straightforward. In terms of reserves, I, I point members back to the recording of the Governance and Audit Committee, um, where actually, after a discussion there, it was suggested that maybe members would benefit from some additional training in terms of reserves, in terms of what is a general fund, what are earmarked reserves, what are restricted reserves. And I think that it would be helpful if we saw whether or not we could get a training, um, um, some form of, of training session in before we go into scrutiny and before we go into full council. Um, you look before you all the um, Reserves are actually already laid out. Um, let's have a look. Page. We're looking at pages 48 onwards, and you can have a look at what what reserves go into which areas and when, what they were for. Um, the fact that school reserves went up from six and a half million in 21 to 13 million, but they're going to come down again next year. S school capital, well, actually. That's that's an earmarked reserve because that's where we're going to build schools, vehicle repairs. How do we pay for our new electric vehicles and so on and so forth? Um, if you look at, let's have a look, page 56, you can actually look at all the grants that came in. Now, I'm not going to go to Welsh Government and say, excuse me, it can prove tricky to process all these grants. We'd prefer, you, prefer not to have them. Um, there are what? Last year, 27.985 um, million in grants. Actually, I would like that money for the Vale. We will make it work. It might it might be tricky in terms of accounting. But as I said, th this is a retrospective report that asks, in effect, do the accounts present fairly? The recommendations are before you and, and I would confirm moving. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Before we move to a vote, Councillor Franks, you're, you're, you're still on my screen. If you can switch your camera off, please. Um, I, I would be grateful. Uh, OK, um, can I have a point no, of clarification? No, 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 you, uh, oh, can I have no, a point no, of order then? No, Councillor Franks. Can I have, can Franks, can I have Franks, a point of order? Uh, Councillor Franks, you may raise a point of order. 
Thank you. I, I did ask at the beginning if councillors will put their hand up if they wanted to speak, but nevertheless, yes, please do raise your point of order. OK, um, the leader um, is kindly suggesting that there should be additional training uh, on uh, on reserves. Could could that uh, include training on how to spend the money that we've yeah. got? Councillor Franks, um, uh, I'm sure you're aware that a point of order is to raise an issue with the procedure of the uh, meeting. It's it's not to invite further debate or to ask further questions. So we're not going to take that point now. If I can ask you again uh, to switch your camera off and if I can suggest if you have any further questions, uh, perhaps if you could raise them in the appropriate way, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, you're still on screen, Councillor Franks. I think you switched your camera off at the top of your laptop yeah. rather than switching the icon off. So if you could do that, that would be very helpful. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I, I thought I had turned it off. No, you, no, you haven't. I don't but know no, how to do it then. That, then uh, that that's fine. We will make sure that you know how to do that in subsequent meetings. But for now, if you could switch your camera off and put yourself on mute, please, Councillor Franks. Uh, there is um, a very clear camera icon at the top of your laptop that you can click, which will remove your camera. But for now, um, we've had the questions, we've given the leader the opportunity to move, uh, to respond to those questions. Um, Councillor Aviat, I can see that that your hand is up. Um, is there a point that, that needs to be made? I just, just want to remind you sorry. that, sorry, can I just remind you that um, we have had all the questions and the leader has yeah, responded to it's those. Councillor Wilkinson. I'm sharing hers because my laptop's playing up, so it's Councillor Wilkinson. I um, just want to make a comment about if we don't have some money, how we build in more council properties for all the homeless. And I'd like Plaid to vote for council housing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. I can see that. Uh, the Democratic, uh, the monitoring officer has raised her hand. Do you want to make a point? Thank you. I was just going to clarify, I think um, you, you appreciate the point that um, after the right of a reply, that signals the end of debate. So um, just, just for the record. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Johnson, uh, bearing in mind the, uh, the point that's just been made, Yes, what was your just, point, just, please? Just really as, as, a, as a point of order, we just had a comment um, from somebody after the conclusion of the um, of the discussion. So I'm just clarifying this, the 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 appropriateness and relevance of that and whether that's going to be minister or not, because there is a specific accusation um, there regarding um, a political party um, by a member of the cabinet. And obviously, I believe I've only voted on one occasion um, against council housing um, put, um, put forward myself. So uh, I think that's both, both misplaced and out of order, given its um, timing of the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your point of order. And if I can ask uh, the monitoring officer to advise us, please. Yes, thank you. As that was um, made, that comment was made by Councillor Wilkinson after the right of reply by the leader. It will not form part of the minutes. Thank you. So we now move to a vote on the recommendations that are before you. Um, can I ask the Chief Executive to take us through that vote, please. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Burnett, can I assume that's the legacy hand? Thank you. And uh, if I can hand over to the Chief Executive to take us through the vote, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. If I ask then those to indicate, oh, Councillor Johnson's got his hand up. I suspect he's probably got a similar question to me. Um, yes, is, is, it, is there a need for a, in this meeting? So. Is, Sorry, go on, Councillor Johnson. Nobody's indicated any opposition to the um, to the the um, the motion in front of us and the recommendations in front of us. Just wondering for whether that, that, vote or not. that was uh, going to be my point, Mayor, as well, because that, um, I wondered if it was worth asking first of all if anybody has got any opposition to the recommendations, in which case it would um, not need me to go through the list of members one by one again if everyone is actually in agreement with the recommendations. 
Yes, thank you very much for making that point. I, I had assumed from some of the comments that there may be opposition, but can I now ask councillors to indicate whether there is any dissent? I see no hands, in which case, uh, thank you very much. We will uh, spare ourselves the vote. The recommendations are approved. Um, and that brings us to the end of the meeting. There are no further items, so it just remains for me to thank everyone for their attendance and the meeting is now closed. Thank you.